In previous lessons, I've actually hinted around a little bit about vertical and horizontal lines. We talked a little bit about the slope of those special lines. Here we're going to talk about their equations. And I want to put it in its own section because they look a little bit weird at first. And I love my little graph here where I've been drawing all the lines, but I think for this lesson it's actually going to slow me down to use that. So I'm going to get the point across with just sketching a little bit more cleanly on the board. So forgive the freehand, but I think it's going to get the point across a little bit easier. Recall the following. Remember we talked about standard form, right? So we have standard form of an equation of a line. It's ax plus by is equal to c. Now a, b, and c can be any number. They can be negative numbers, they can be positive numbers, and they can be zero. They can be any number. It just governs a different line that points a different way, right? So we've done lots of these things. You know that by putting a, b, and c and making them different, we're going to have different equations of lines that come out and different graphs that come out. Now, Let's take, just as an example, just to illustrate the point, let's take a is equal to 0, which we haven't done before, and let's make b is equal to 1, and let's make c is equal to 2. What would happen if we had that as our equation? Well, we put a in for 0, so it would be 0 times x plus 1 times y is equal to c, which is equal to 2. Now, right away you have a problem because your coefficient in front of the x is 0. So that means no matter what x value you put here, this term is always going to go away because it's multiplied by 0. And then, of course, y is just multiplied by 1. So really what you have here is um, a much simpler situation where when you set this thing equal to 0, what happens is y is always going to be equal to 2. Now, normally, we would be ready to handle anything that comes out of a standard form equation because we would say it's just going to, when we solve for y, it's going to be mx plus b. We read the slope. We read the y-intercept, we graph the line. Then you look at this and you say, this doesn't look anything like that. So how do I graph that? And what is this line? Okay. Well, when you have an, an equation of a line that has, mean, has y equals a number, uh, this is a horizontal line. And because it's a horizontal line, that means the slope is equal to 0. Remember, it's not slanted up or down. It's just actually equal to 0. Now, the way to think about this is the following. I know it doesn't look like a regular line, mx plus b. I know it doesn't look like that. The way you read this, though, is you say this equation is telling you that y is equal to 2. The y value of every point on this line, for any point, is 2. So that means the, the reason it looks weird is because there's no x here. Usually it's mx plus b and there's no x at all. So it doesn't, it's like, what does that mean? But because there's no x there, it means that this line doesn't even depend on x. It doesn't matter what x is doing. x can be anything. But y is always equal to 2. Always. No matter what x is. So that means if you were to graph this thing, what it really looks like is this. Here is x. Here is y. Here is 1. Here is 2. Tick mark number 1. Tick mark number 2 like this. And what this line looks like is a horizontal line that goes directly through the point y is equal to 2 in both directions on and on to infinity. How do we know that this equation of a line is actually a horizontal line? Well, because what I said before is because it's telling you that the y value of every point on this line is 2. Notice that the y value here is 2, 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 way over here, the y value over here would still be 2. No matter what value of x you put in, because there is no x, y is always equal to 2. Now another way to see this, uh, kind of I like this way a little better, is that take this equation of a line that we just figured out, y is equal to 2, and let's do the following. What this is really saying is that since it's a horizontal line, we know that the slope is equal to 0. And since we know it's mx plus b, like this, what we're really saying is that y is equal to 0 times x plus 2. This is really the equation of the line here. If I gave you this equation of a line, you'd say, oh, I know how to do that. That's the y-intercept. I'm going to put it here, put a dot there, and then I'm going to go rise over run. What's my slope? Oh, it's 0. So there is no rise at all. Uh, so no matter what I do, I, I can't rise. If I want to run two units over, I don't rise at all. 
if I want to run three more units over from that y-intercept, I don't rise at all. So that means that however far I run, I don't rise at all. That's why all of the points end up being on a horizontal line, because if I start at the y-intercept, I don't rise at all. I just keep running and putting points everywhere, no matter where I go. So however you want to think about it, it's totally fine with me. I don't care. But the bottom line is, anytime you have y equals a number, all it means is a horizontal line that crosses through the value of that y uh, you know, number. And it goes on and on forever, horizontal line. So let's give a couple more examples. And like I said, I'm probably just going to sketch them over here instead of using the big one because I think it's going to be more helpful. So for instance, if I give you the line y is equal to 5, then you need to know, yes, it's 0x plus 5, OK? But you don't need to go through all that stuff. Really, if this is the value of 5 in the y direction, then all this means is this is a horizontal line that goes through the point 5, slope equal to 0. You need to kind of get used to memorizing the idea that this line is a horizontal line. What if I have the line y is equal to negative 3? I don't see an mx plus b, so then I know basically it doesn't matter what the value of x is, y is always going to be negative 3. So if this were x and this were y, and down here somewhere was negative 3, y is equal to negative 3, then what this means is it's a horizontal flat line that crosses directly through there. All horizontal lines look exactly the same. They just, y equals a number, and I've outlined why uh, they look the way that they do in the previous uh, lesson there. All right? Um, and if you wanted to absolutely bring it home, you could look at this one, for instance, and say, well, the real equation of this line is 0, because we know the slope is 0, x plus 5, which this is going to kill it, so y is equal to 5. And I could do the same thing over here, 0, x plus a negative 3, and that's going to kill it, so that's why the equation is the way it is. Now let me ask you a question. If horizontal lines uh, have the form y equals a number, y equals 6, y equals 0, y equals negative 3, y equals 1 half, y equals 5 seventeenths, they're all horizontal lines going through that point. What do you think the form of the equation of a vertical line will look like? Well, it's not going to be y equals something because that expresses a horizontal line. The form for a vertical line is very similar but obviously different. It's x equals a number. That always specifies a vertical line. x equals a number. And the way we're going to get there is I'll just show you. Uh, let me go to a blank, blank board here. I'll just show you by the same sort of um, the same sort of argument. Standard form. Let's go back to standard form because we know that those are always lines. ax plus by is equal to c. Now in the previous case, we started here and we said, hey, let's set a equal to 0. Let's set whatever's in front of the x be equal to 0. What happens? And we get horizontal lines. So over here, let's see what happens when we set b equal to 0. What do you think is going to happen? Well, of course, I already told you. You're going to get vertical lines. So what you're going to have is ax uh, plus b is equal to 0 times y equal to c. Now this term drops away because it's multiplied uh, by 0. And I forgot to actually mention this. Let's go ahead and actually pick a real problem. Let's set b is equal to 0. Let's set a is equal to 1. And let's set c is equal to 2, just to have apples and apples comparison to what we had before. So we set c equal to 2 before. And we set the other guy equal to 1. So we'll make it a is equal to 1 here. What do we have here? This term drops away. So what do we have? x equals 2. And I'm claiming, although I haven't proven it to you yet, that this is the form of a vertical line. Any line that's a vertical, and I mean vertical, not slightly tilted, I mean straight up and down, absolutely vertical, always has the form x equals something. In this case, it's x equals 2. But it could be x equals 5. could be x equals 7. could be x equals negative 3. could be x equals 0. 0.5. Whatever. x equals a number is always a vertical line. Why? Because of the same argument from before. What this equation is telling me is that um, there is no y anywhere in this equation. So for all values of y, it doesn't matter what value of y I have, x always equals 2. So here's 2, and here's the x-axis. For any value of y I want to throw at you, whether I'm up here, I'm up here, I'm up here, down here, down here, down here, x always equals 2. This is the x equals 2 mark. Here I'm at x equals 2. Here I'm at x equals 2. Here I'm at x equals 2. Here I'm still at x equals 2. Here I'm at x equals 2. Doesn't matter. I'm always at x equals 2 independent of y. That's why there's no y there. Because it doesn't matter what y is. I've kind of killed it with the 0 up here. 
So that's why it works the way it does. So if you wanted to graph it, I already kind of told you what you have here, but you have X, you have Y. Here is the tick mark two. It's a vertical line that goes through the point X equals two, absolutely straight up and down. All right. And now that we have the general idea, we can go and do another one. We can say, what if you had the equation x is equal to 4? Well, it's a vertical line just by the form of the thing, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, here's the value x is equal to 4. It is a vertical line uh, that goes right through x equals 4. Any value of y you pick, it doesn't matter. Independent of all values of y, x is always equal to 4. And then the final one I'm going to give you, uh, the final two I'm going to give you, uh, very simple, I mean, there's nothing, nothing hard about it, is what if you have the equation of a line x is equal to negative 5? It's going to be the same kind of thing. Here's x, here's y, here's negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's call this negative 5. And so you're going to have a vertical line that goes right through this. And then the last one, uh, what if you have the equation of a line x is equal to negative 1 half? x is equal to negative 1 half means... If this, let's say this is one, and let's say this is one half, or negative one half, I should say, negative one, negative one half like this, meaning this tick mark is at negative one half, then my vertical line is gonna go right through there like this. I could have just started this lesson and just said, hey guys, um, horizontal lines uh, have a special form. Horizontal lines are y is equal to a number, y is equal to two, y is equal to three or whatever. And I could have said, vertical lines have a special form. It's x equal to 1 half, x equal to negative 3, or whatever. And I could have just said, memorize it. And then you would think, well, I guess vertical lines have a special equation. I guess I just need to learn it. Or horizontal lines are just special, I guess. I guess I just need to learn it. But I don't like doing that because they're not special. They come from the same exact standard form that all lines come from. It's just that when you set one of these things equal to zero, a special thing drops out that happens to be a special case of all the other lines is when the line goes straight up and down. And then when you set this one equal to zero, it turns out that you get another special case, but it's not because they're special or they obey a different equation, it's because of the constants we set that are different, but they all come from the same place. So in math, you shouldn't memorize different things and say, well, this is different than that. Usually, they're all related to one another, right? Another way to think about it for the vertical lines, as I've mentioned before many times, is that the slope, you often say, is undefined, but I've been trying to teach you that really I want you to think of it as an infinite slope. Rise over run, right? So you have rise over run. What I'm saying is rise over run is infinity. So what I'm saying is, let's say I try to run a tiny bit to the right. How much do I need to rise by? If I run a tiny bit to the right, but my slope is infinity, it means I need to rise an infinite amount. So here, if I have a point on the line, let's say right here, and I go to the right a teeny weeny weeny bit, then I have to rise all the way to infinity. And so that's why they give rise to vertical lines because the slope is basically infinity like that. So horizontal lines, y is equal to a number. Vertical lines, x is equal to a number. Remember it. A lot of students get confused by that. I hope we've cleared it up. Make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson. And we're going to explore a different form of the equation of a line, which has its own very useful reasons why we use it. It's called the point, uh, the point uh, slope form. And we're going to use that in the next lesson to understand how to write a different form of the equation of a line. We'll do it by step-by-step -step examples. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.